so there's the lake and you know we're down on one end we got to go up along the mountain to get to the other side to where you know this campsite was on the way up and I get a ways away from them and I think it was about a quarter mile in terms of how far I was ahead of them I come up over this ridge and off to my right there's two grizzly bears and they're only 30 feet from me and they're at a full charge Welcome to the Range Podcast. I'm Ricky Bruley, and with me is Jake Hollywood Iverson. Join us at the Archery Range, where we'll tell stories from the hunt, discuss technical bow shooting tactics and gear, and pick the brains of some of the most successful people to ever shoot a bow. Whether you're about to shoot that X for the win or send an arrow at a trophy buck, this podcast is for you. The Range Podcast is brought to you by Vapor Trail Archery, makers of the best bow strings money can buy, originators of limb-driven arrow rest technology, and innovators of stokerized stabilizer systems. Welcome to The Range. I'm Ricky Bruley, and joining me today, as always, is Hollywood, along with Vapor Trail CEO Rory O'Loughlin. Thank you all for joining us today. You can find the video version of this episode on our Vapor Trail YouTube channel, so please head on over and subscribe. Today, our guest is Dr. Bradley Johnson. He is an avid outdoorsman and experienced backpacker. Dr. Johnson is also Rory's ear, nose, and throat specialist, and the reason he is here is because he has an incredible story to tell. Thanks for being here, Doc. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks Good. for having me. Awesome. Yeah, for awesome. sure. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Rory, for being back. Welcome yeah. back, man. No, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> and I also want to disclose that, you know, I'll sign whatever we need to so we don't violate any HIPAA laws. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to no, share about the ENT. I'm not too worried. Yeah. Okay. I was asking him about that. Uh, so, yeah, Rory will uh, kind of jump in and tell us how you two met and uh, how we're here on a podcast now from yeah. doctor and patient yeah. to outdoors. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> um, well, I, I've lived in Texas my whole life up until three and a half years ago. And so like every year, I don't know if it's just the different humidity levels and the different like pollen and dust and different plants in the air. But my my Texan uh, uh, sinuses couldn't take it. And so <laughs> I was getting sinus infections every year. Um, and then I finally was like, OK, I got to do something about it. Um, so made an appointment and went and saw Dr. Bradley Johnson and, uh, he recommended some, you know, a treatment. So I had uh, sinus surgery done and I must say total game changer. Um, I, I, right now I have not had an infection since, so, um, I can breathe normal and, uh, yeah, feels like I got, uh, two pipes going, going, <laughs> <laughs> going in. And so I can breathe clearly. Not only that, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about it. Um, my wife, because I don't do cardio a lot, but then I'll, I'll, you know, if we have chance, we have a two-year and a four-year-old, yeah. so you can only do so much, right? Right. With, with working out, um, she was praising me for doing two miles uh, yesterday out of the blue, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, I, I, uh, I didn't think you were gonna last, honestly, because she <laughs> runs quite a bit." And uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a side effect, that's a benefit or not. I well, can't I'll take it. Doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but, um, yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about your practice? Yeah, no, I guess uh, I, I've got this amazing story. We'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, I just, you know, when I was talking with you in the office, I think you had some camo on or something, and I'm like, this guy's an outdoorsman. I, you love this story. And so, um, you know, we have a, I've just got a little website that I put it out on uh, where, you know, our church made up a 30-minute video, which is awesome. And uh it uh, really kind of goes over the whole thing, and it's been a nice way to kind of share it easily, you mm -hmm. know. And so I think I gave that to you, and then I think you're like, yeah, that's pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, so I, I remember the first time I was sitting in your office, and, um, you know, you turned around, and you were going to type something in the computer, um, and I saw your gnarly scar. And, like, ever since a kid, I, I was always been a fascinated with scars. <laughs> I love them. I like all the kids in college when they're, like, Oh, I got this tattoo. I got this. Like, that. I was always like, I'm looking up scarification. Like, anyway, just always loved it. Um, so when I saw your scar, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty gnarly. I don't know what happened to you, but yeah. So 
you know, uh, jump ahead um, to my anesthesia cocktail waking up. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's when, uh, I, you know, we got uh, going down the road as far as what happened, and you were telling me, and I was just like, wow. And luckily, my wife wrote it down oh, uh, as yeah. far as the website at right, this right. time. And so, yeah, I just thought it was too incredible of a story. Um, and so, again, that's why we wanted to have you on the show. So yeah, thank you for being absolutely. here. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, um, as, as far as that goes, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, uh, take your time. Let's just, you know, dip our toes in the water as far as, you know, uh, your trip and how one thing led to another. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I've got three kids, and uh, we've been involved in church, and we've got uh, a group of maybe eight or nine of us that we've kind of all done life with, you know, and you try to get away uh, on vacations with guys just to, Kind of, you kind of feel like you're not living if you're not doing something, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of different things. We went to the Boundary Waters a few times, and then uh, in '09, I think was the first time we went out to the Bear Tooth Mountains. Uh, so this is right outside of Red Lodge, in between Red Lodge and Yellowstone, and that was the first time I've ever been out there, and it was pretty amazing. And uh, at that time, we didn't, you know, we didn't see any bears or anything like that. Uh, you know, we. And then uh, we went again uh, a few years later, and then about five years later, this is when this, this all happened. And um, so myself and three other good friends, we all decided, yeah, we're going to go back there. We're going to do this and because uh, it had been a while. And, you know, again, I was really crazy busy with work, uh, way too busy. And, you know, you, you realize, like, if you don't take time, you know, your time's going to be done and yeah, you'll be yeah. able to do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, so, you know, we say, yeah, we're going to do this. And so it's myself, uh, my friend Justin Reed, who's a fire captain in the Minneapolis Fire Department, and then Tom Theory and, and Todd Green. And so we, uh, the way the, the trip works, we pack everything up and, uh, you know, we drive out after work. Uh, so we don't have to miss a day and uh, drive through the night so we're real rested when we get there you know <laughs> and uh, one of the kind of the funny stories you know as I'm you know making my list of things to do or to get is uh, you know I got to get some bear spray because the trip before we did see a black bear and mm. we came over this this uh, little ridge and you know it was you know probably 40 yards away so not very far but uh and this black bear is just ripping apart a tree, getting into the grubs mm. and stuff. And it saw us and just ran right up the mountain. You know, I was amazed how quick they can go. Mm -hmm. um, but we're like, yeah, I should probably get some bear spray. So I'm at, I'm at the store getting the bear spray, and I'm on the phone with Tom. And, you know, I didn't know it comes in two sizes, you know. And it, I don't know exactly what the size is, like an 8-ounce or a 12-ounce. And, and I'm like, you know, like, yeah, wouldn't that suck if you're basically getting ripped apart by a bear and you figured out you should have got the 12-ouncer instead of the 8-ouncer. <laughs> so yeah, right? I got the 12-ouncer, but Smart. it didn't help me out at all. So, um, But, yeah, we drive through the night. You know, we each take chance or chances, turns uh, driving, and uh, we arrive in Red Lodge at about 7 o'clock. We have breakfast. And, uh, you know, I took a picture of my breakfast, which was, you know, just a – omelet and some pancakes and I sent it to my wife and it was kind of foretelling maybe because I said my last meal and uh, oh. you know I sent that <laughs> off and then as soon as you leave Red Lodge you kind of drive up into the mountain so you lose cell service like mm -hmm. five minutes out of Red Lodge yeah. and then we have 45 minutes maybe an hour to drive to the trailhead so you got to go up into the mountains all these switchbacks and everything and mm -hmm. then you get to i don't know nine thousand feet or more i don't know exactly what it is and so, sorry to stop you did you yeah. actually text that to your wife and say that oh yeah yeah wow yeah okay yeah so um so yeah so we drive up there get to the trailhead maybe at nine o'clock or so and we haven't i mean you really don't sleep when you're driving in a no. car, riding in a car. So, and we haven't acclimated to the, you know, we're going from Minnesota to 9,000 feet like that. And mm -hmm. so, so we're all, you know, in tip chop shape, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we pack up our, pack up our gear and, you know, I'm not a very efficient packer. 
just because, you know, I'm packing my bag and I'm like, I got to make this light because I got to carry this. But then there's always that little thing, you know, you're like, oh, I might need that, which you never mm -hmm. really do. But and then I got an extra, you know, 20 pounds on my pack. So my pack is at least 60, 65, 70 pounds with the water and everything. But it's huge. I mean, it's up over top of my head, mm -hmm. uh, which was actually probably saved me. Um, and I had one of these jet boil canister things, okay. boils water real quick. And that was on the very, very top because I couldn't fit it anywhere else. And mm -hmm. so we all get our packs on. And I'm actually holding my bear spray in my hand the whole time because, you know, I didn't have anywhere else to put it, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we hike in and, you know, you go up and over a bunch of mountains to get to this lake that we're going to go to. And this lake is about eight miles in um, and we're just sucking wind the whole time. You know, the first mile, it's like you got this pounding headache. You just are, you think you're going to die. And then you kind of <laughs> ease into it. You get into it. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it takes us probably, I don't know, four or five hours to get to you know within a half mile of where we're going to be and uh my friend todd green he worked uh for an audiovisual company and uh he thought that this was this great idea that he's got this big camera bag and he's got this camera and it's got a pretty cool fisheye lens on mm -hmm. it and everything and he's like well, I'm going to bring this because it's going to counterweight the, my backpack and make it lighter. And I'm like, I don't think that's how physics works, but whatever. <laughs> and so, and he's kind of struggling and the whole time I'm offering to, to take it for him. He's just not having it. And mm -hmm. so um, on that last thing, he, 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 we're sitting on this big piece of granite and, uh, you know, he takes it off and I just grab it and put it on and he's like, give it back. And I'm just, I'm just walk away, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's the lake and, you know, we're down on one end. We got to go up along the mountain to get to the other side to where, you know, this campsite was, which was great because it had a river that was flowing into it. Mm. And uh, so on the way up, you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm sucking it up. I'm not stopping anymore. Uh, I'm just going to get there. And when they find, you know, get catch up to me that's great because mm -hmm. um, everyone knew where they we were going and so I get going and I get a ways away from them and I think it was about a quarter mile you know when we kind of distanced it out in terms of how far I was ahead of them and uh, I come up over this ridge and off to my right um, there's two grizzly bears both the same size uh, so I don't think it was mother daughter or mother mm -hmm. kid um, and they're only 30 feet from me, and they're at a full charge. We'll be right back. New for the 2023 archery season is our brand new online arrow customizer. Build your victory or eastern arrows with multiple vein options, configurations, and custom arrow wraps in a large array of designs and colors. Spine indexing and expedited build options are also available so you can get back out in the field and flinging in style. Check out the Vapor Trail Arrow Customizer at www.vaportrailarchery.com forward slash arrow customizer. You know, there's not, you know, the picture in the movie where they stand up and go, ah, you know, yeah. it's just they're at me. And just, I'm like, just immediate like that. Right immediate, away. yeah. Oh, wow. No, no, I didn't hear anything except, you know, when I saw them coming. And so they're, they're at a full charge. And I'm like trying to make myself, I, first of all, I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I'm trying to like make myself big. And I'm not that big a guy, but, you know, and I'm yelling and screaming and they're, no stop and it, it, I, it's oh. probably like five six seconds but be, between you know when they close the gap on me and i'm trying to get the cap off my bear spray which i've been carrying in my hand very smartly mm -hmm. yeah but uh i can't get it off i mean it's basically and you know it finally the bears from you know it's about five seven feet from me the closest one and, you know, out of frustration, I just chuck the can as hard as I can right at this bear's head. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, how you throw something in the wastebasket, you're two feet away and you miss somehow? Well, yeah. it went, sailed right over its head. Mm. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And so, 
when I was younger, you know, we would kick, we'd go out west with my parents and we'd go to the ranger station. They showed you, you know, films at that point, the reels, and you thought, because I'm old, you know, <laughs> and you thought this is the coolest thing. But they tell you, you know, when you're getting attacked by a grizzly, you're supposed to go face down, you yeah. know, and just pretend you're your dad. Right. And I'm like, how do you do that when you're getting ripped apart? But um, yeah. but that's what I did. I turned my back to the bear, and then uh, I don't know if I, have, you know, jumped on the ground or if the bear pushed me to the ground. I'm not sure which. Um, and then I just kind of laid there. And, you know, I'm sure it was just a matter of seconds, but it felt like, felt like a lot more. Mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, I've got a couple dogs. They're small dogs, but, you know, they sniff around at things and, you know, I think only one bear attacked me. I don't know. I was face down for the whole thing. But um, it's rooting around. It's sniffing, you know, underneath my arm on this right side here. And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just locks in. And it basically rips out my lat and wow. basically grabs my shoulder blade. And it pulls me off the trail. And... and I mean, I've never had pain like that before. I've broken some limbs, had some cuts and stuff. But um, we said pull you off the trail. He's dragging you. Yeah, I, th I figure like I'm like the dog's toy, you know, basically <laughs> yep. getting pulled off the trail. And so I'm hearing my bones basically crunching and cracking. Um, and so it crushed my scapula there, tore out my lat, and then. It got up in here, and uh, there's a nerve that controls your pinky and your fourth finger there, and so it damaged that as well. And so that part took a minute or two, it's hard to say. But I made this noise. I've never heard myself, and I don't think I could make it if I tried. I mean, it's this high-pitched just scream, you know. Pr but very it's, primal. Oh, my goodness, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I remember just vividly, like, what is that? Um, but I'm screaming, and it's like the worst pain I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm face down, and, you know, as it lets go, you know, I turn my head to the right, and I see this huge gush of blood. And, and I'm a physician. I'm like, well, it must have avulsed or ripped an artery, and I'm just going to bleed out mm -hmm. up here. And, uh, and then, you know, and then I, I, go, I, I go silent, and... I'm just wondering, well, what's, what's next? And initially I thought it was sitting on me. But I think it's just kind of had its front paws on me, kind of moving around me and, you know, seeing what's going on. And uh, one of, I don't know if it was a claw or a tooth, you know, that went through that, that jet boil that was on the top of my head. Um, oh. So, I, I mean, I really, that my pack saved my life for sure. Um, and then maybe a minute later, you know, then it goes into the left side. Oh, and, um, you know, again, that side actually was worse than the right. So it got me a little higher. Um, I don't have a deltoid anymore. It crushed my scapula on that side. And then it ripped out my tricep as well oh, and gosh. broke my elbow. And um, this is all with its mouth. Oh, yeah. Like this yeah, this is not claws. Um, oh, my God. And uh, that side... I think lasted longer. It was far more painful. And uh, at that point, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but I, th I yelled out, kill me, because it's basically, like, I would never do well in torture because, I mean, I, I can't imagine the things you see on TV, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd <laughs> give it up right away. But um, so it felt like you were being eaten alive. Oh, absolutely, because, yeah. you know, I was. And, um, and then, you know, that heart lasted seemed like a couple minutes um and then it, it let go and uh, you know i'm just laying there you know and i'm sure i'm in a state of shock um and i'm just kind of waiting for what is next and um for whatever reason they left uh, my friends that are a quarter mile away they heard a noise initially and they thought it was like I came upon a turkey vulture or something like that that was squawking mm. you know and then the second time I think they heard uh, you know it was my voice you know mm. that they they're like that's a human voice and so my friend Justin he comes running and uh, I'm pulled off the trail so he runs past me and initially and somehow he sees he's me. he's the fire and, captain yeah he glances out of the corner of eye and sees me there and 
I'm certain that I'm going to die. I mean, I, the, I, the pain that I had, it, it just never left. I mean, it was just the worst pain I've ever had, and it just never let up. Um, but I'm laying, you know, I'm, it's almost like a dinosaur. Your arms are all crippled because, you, you know, I don't have a rotator cuff. I don't have, uh, you know, I'm just like laying on my stomach. And I'm kind of trapped by this backpack on my back. And, but I'm, I'm telling these, you know, as the other two get there, I'm telling them, you know, just leave, leave, leave me here. I'm dying. I'm dead. You know, save yourselves. Because in my mind, I'm thinking the bears are coming back and they're right. going to get you guys too. Um, but, uh, and uh, at that point, I asked, you know, I asked them to, you know, to get out the camera to record my last words to my kids and my wife. Oh, geez. And um, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted something a little bit more poignant. But all I could say is, you know, Miranda, Haley, Ian, Elise, Mom and Dad, I love you and I'll see you in heaven. And that's basically all I got out. And um, my, my friend Justin, the fire captain, he had had uh, some gauze, and so he knows first aid from being a fire captain. Mm -hmm. They're usually first responders. So mm -hmm. he packed the wounds, and, um, and initially they thought, well, we're going to carry you out, which, you know, as even being in shock, you know, I knew you're not going to carry me out. You guys barely got here to begin with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. they're all cramping up, and... Um, but they made this gurney, um, and as Todd, he goes out in the woods to get, you know, some pine trees to make this gurney. And as he's out in the woods, he hears some rustling, and he's telling everyone to be quiet. And then later he talked to the game warden, and he's like, yeah, the bears are probably still there watching you guys. Um, wow. But then he makes this gurney, and uh, they put me on it a couple times, which was just <laughs> It was awful. I mean, it's my old, you know, it's just like they throw you down. Oh, it didn't work. We'll try it again kind of deal. Oof. So then oh. they came up with the idea where Todd and Tom were going to run out, and then Justin would be with me to kind of, you know, take care of me, I guess. Um, and throughout this whole time, like even during the mauling, I just I never lost consciousness or anything. It would have been nice, but uh, right. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm there. Um, and as a physician, you kind of know, well, this is kind of bad things that can happen is, you know, my breathing was extremely erratic. You know, I couldn't control my breathing at all. There were times where I'd go, you know, a breath every 20, 30 seconds. And I'm like, well, that usually means you're going to die kind of deal. And so for the first two, two and a half hours, I mean, I was really, I'd made my peace with God, you know, um, and uh, just knew that you know this was it um so todd had brought a whistle with um which was smart and then tom tom and todd ran out they just grabbed a couple of things which you know in hindsight probably wasn't the brightest idea because they didn't quite know exactly where they were going but todd's blowing the whistle tom's in front of them and uh they're starting to to, to run out um but they're cramping up the whole time. You know, the adrenaline only lasts for so long. Mm -hmm. And then Justin's with me, and, um, you know, Justin's looking around. It's pretty eerie, you know. And after seeing that, I'm sure Tom and Todd just thought every little corner, you know, there's a bear waiting to get you kind oh, of yeah. deal. Um, but Justin, you know, feels like we got to get to a different place, which was probably pretty smart because um, we left all our packs there. And... Um, Somehow he pulls me up by my waist and says, you got to walk for me. And somewhere along the line, you know, I got the, one of the bears got my, the, my hip here. Got a, I got a cool, this looks like a smile on my, on my, <laughs> <laughs> my wife is the only one that can see that one. <laughs> but, uh, and then I got some abrasions and, and some claw marks on the legs that, um, um, but somehow he was able to get me to walk. And I, I walked that quarter of a mile basically. And then. You know, I, I basically almost passed out. I'm like, I'm blacking out here. We got to. And so he laid me down and had my feet up to get the blood to my heart. And I'm just looking up and uh, looking through the pine trees and, uh, you know, thinking, oh, this would be beautiful if. And basically just waiting to die, you know, right. and I'm just 
pray, pray for my wife, my kids, you know, and that's, and then just kind of waited for, for her death to happen. And, um, and then Tom and Todd, so they're, they're going out and they're cramping up and they maybe were gone. They maybe made it, actually it was probably right around three-fourths of a mile. And uh, Tom has a cousin who's a trail runner and they're basically a mountain runner that runs through the mountains for fun. Mm. I, I don't understand <laughs> it myself. Those but people are nuts. Yeah, but, um, but he's praying, he's praying, he's saying, you know, Lord, please help us to find someone, someone who can get us out faster like a trail runner. And Todd's in the back thinking, well, why do you got to be so specific? Just, you know, someone who's going to get out faster. And so um, but they get about three, three quarters of a mile down the way, and uh, there's these two dogs that are, you know, out in front of them. And then just right behind them is katie and dusty and they're uh she's actually a trail runner and uh dusty is her boyfriend and um you know they're like tom's trying to tell them what happened and we got to get out and um we got to get a helicopter and um and they're like well okay let's go and so they go with them maybe three four hundred yards and katie looks back and is like we can get out a lot faster without you guys. And Todd's like, yeah, go, go, go. And so almost the same exact thing that, you know, Tom was praying. Huh. And so they run out. Um, and, uh, and then Tom and Todd are like, well, do we go back? Do we keep going out? And they're like, well, we should probably keep going out just in case, um, in case, you know, they don't make it for whatever reason. Yeah. Can I, uh, just yeah. for the uh, viewers and listeners here, I, so the reason that you have to have runners go out is because they, they, there's no cell service. There's oh, no, absolutely, yeah. You leave no Red Lodge, phone. there's no cell service. So, you know, Red Lodge is about a 45-minute hour's drive from, mm -hmm. you know, cell service. And so, and I didn't have a sat phone or any uh -huh. of that sort of thing, which I do now. <laughs> um, and so, so then justin and i are there and justin goes back and forth to the attack site you know three or four different times to get different things such as water and you know i i just just wearing a shorts and a t-shirt and then um and so he's getting blankets and everything that's sleeping bags or whatever to you know kind of keep me warm because i'm yeah. i'm shivering at that point and um and then he's also, you know, thinking, well, how, how am I going to signal a helicopter? Because in his mind, the best case scenario, we get a helicopter at 530 or something like that. And so he finds this granite outcropping and cuts some, you know, red or some uh, pine trees. And then, uh, and then Todd, Todd, you know, this was the other funny thing is Todd's got this tarp we said you know everyone's got a packing list you got a Todd you got to bring us a tarp just in case it rains we can make a little kind of common area for us so we're not all just hun hunkered down in our tents mm -hmm. so he's got this tarp and he had a open house um and so for his son and so he had all these white tarps so he brings this white tarp and we're like yeah that really blends in you yeah. know <laughs> but I mean so but Justin grabs this white tarp, and it was like, yeah, I'm going to use this to signal the helicopter, which is kind of stands out. So, yeah. um, but, and then, you know, we're just kind of waiting. And I, I honestly think if I didn't get out there, get out of there on that night, I would have died. If I wouldn't have died, I wouldn't have my arms for sure, just because, you know, there's bears mouths are not that clean, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so infection with uh, infection, sure. sepsis, and the bears actually came back to those backpacks and um, the very, that, that day or that evening. Um, so we're waiting and Katie and Dusty actually get, get out and uh, they drive to, there's an area on the top of the mountain called the, the top of the world store and they're able to, you know, call whoever you called, I guess 911 and then they <laughs> patch you to whoever it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they really had to sell the story to, to get a helicopter to come get me. And they're like, well, can't he just walk out? And she's like, and she didn't oh see God. the whole thing. And, and they're like, well, we've got two other rescues going on at, the ver at this very moment. Some person fell down in a ravine and they're trying to look for this guy. And then there was a lost kid. 
Um, so then, you know, we get the smallest helicopter he got. So when I think about a helicopter, I'm thinking, oh, they just raise the, lower the basket, put me in it, bring me up, and we're good to go. But mm -hmm. that one wasn't, wasn't available to me. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a kind of amazing, right at 530, um, you know, we hear, first, well, even before that, we we heard a, a plane, and, and I think this was plane was probably for one of the other two that were, you know, they were looking for because it just went right past. And mm. um, but right at 5:30, you know, we hear this helicopter come over over the over the mountain, and you know, goes right comes right across the right across the lake, and uh, you know, Justin's got the fire going with smoking the the green boughs, and he's waving that tarp and. The helicopter went over a few times, and oh, we're man. like, how can you not see that, you yeah, know? Right. Um, but they had to burn off some fuel, so when they landed, the only place to land was below the mountain, basically in this bog area. Um, and it was in September, so it was, you know, dried up, but still wet. Mm -hmm. And so finally they land, and now they've got to climb up this, you know, mountain, and it's about a half mile up the mountain to, well, actually it's a mile, mile up the mountain to get to us. Oof. And uh, and so they finally get to us, and then um, they got to drag, you know, haul me down in this um, gurney. And uh, fortunately, the pilot who never usually does come up, I think, was probably enticed by you know seeing a bear mauling. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's just a great guy all around because there's other pilots that won't even get out of the the copter. Um, but he comes up with the the nurse and. Um, and they put an IV in me, put me in the gurney, and then you know now they got to get me down the down the mountain. And Justin's a he's a he's a very athletic guy, you know. Thank goodness, um, <laughs> he's basically all muscle, and so he's grabbing the head or grabbing the feet. I don't know, remember which one. And the other two each have each side. And this is not like you know the path you you rollerblade on something. It's a single track with boulders all the way through, and it was just. It was excruciating for him in regards to uh, it took probably an hour to get me down. You know, they'd go a few feet and just collapse with exhaustion and then, you know, pick me up and go, go a few more feet. And uh, I think I was fortunate that, you know, they had just gotten this nice Kevlar gurney, which made it lighter. But uh, they pretty much destroyed that one, so you know, okay. they went back to the aluminum ones. So, oh, so but we finally get down to the to the marsh area, and uh, they get me in there in the copter, and it's dusk. I mean, it's basically like we didn't have much time. They're not going to come in the middle of the night, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, because it's a smaller copter, you know, they're like, well, Justin, you got to wait. And uh, there, you've got a rescue crew coming in. They should be here at about 11 p.m., you know. Oof. And so, so they gave him, you know, a couple things. Uh, and he started a fire, and he's just got to wait there in the middle of the wilderness after seeing all this and just kind of wait for someone to come rescue him. And, um, and so, but... Yeah, they did come and they got them out. Uh, there was four or five of them that came uh, with headlights on and took him out in the middle of the dark, you know. Um, and then, you know, I I had my little helicopter ride and um, flew me to Billings and I was in the hospital for just eight days, so it wasn't too long. Oh, wow. Um, it's so, still uh, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, obviously everyone had an intricate role and, yeah and absolutely you know part of the miracle of right keeping you oh, alive absolutely. and surviving but i mean hats off to justin so my father-in-law he's uh an ex uh fire captain yeah, too yeah and so with their training oh yeah of emts you know that's yeah like you said that's majority of their calls is, right it's not fires for yeah sure, yeah so. it's not it's it's people with health issues yeah. and or have been in accidents and right so yeah that's uh pretty incredible yeah that he was right there yeah uh, you know because I, you know, I'm sure, like I said, everyone had their part of uh, helping you survive. But I bet he he carried carried a, a the lion's share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. He definitely, you know, packing the wounds was a big deal to stop the blood yeah. loss for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How you didn't bleed out in that time is 
just insane. Yeah, it really is. I mean, because <laughs> it's just, I mean, I have big pieces of me that are missing. And, um, yeah, so it is really, really quite amazing. So. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. It's an incredible story. Yeah. I, mean, I can't even imagine. Um, like, I've got cold sweats over here just even thinking about, like, going through that experience. Yeah. And I've listened to a handful of, um, you know, Bear Attacks, read some books right. and some things like that. And it, But it's just like this one, you know, just the detail and everything is um, just incredible to go through that and <clears throat> and to have, to see God's role in, yeah, absolutely in in um your survival yeah and just the story that you told about uh the prayers that yeah. brought the trail runners in and um so that that's really cool too i think that yeah. that's fantastic yeah and it's um you know as i'm laying there waiting to die and it, it, even immediately after you know i knew like this was it i mean i i had this peace even through the the, the worst pain that i've ever had or ever want to have is I had this piece that, you know, I know where I'm going, even though, you know, I, I thought I had a lot more time to live on this earth, mm-hmm. but uh, I know where I'm going. And I don't know if, how you get that piece if you don't know where you're going, I guess. So, right. right. Or even how to just get through it without having that piece to, you know, just to think about, right. you know, that putting you at peace and trying to kind of get your mind off of what's going on maybe a little bit. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of a blessing too that, you know, I, I don't have, I can relive bite by bite, you know, and I have no, you know, post-traumatic stress or any of it. And, uh, you know, my cousin, he's a writer and I, I, I asked my wife to call him the next day so I could kind of relive or rehash it all because I, I just found it just to be amazing that I'm still alive and mm-hmm. I didn't want to forget any of the details of it because um, I, I just I do think it's a miracle. You right. Know? Absolutely. Yeah, right. for sure. When they uh, send in those rescue teams, did they leave Justin with like you know extra bear spray uh, or gun had, or she, I mean, no, what did no, they come in with? That's, she didn't have any of that. So I oh think what God. she had, uh, you know. What they had was some Taco Johns that they hadn't eaten yet. And oh, uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking, you're and, in the middle of an attack. And I think they gave him, like, uh, uh, I don't think they had a sleeping bag. I think what they had was, a, like, a down coat or something like that. But that's blanket. it. Yeah, and I think they did have a sat phone they gave him. Okay. Um, okay. But I don't know that he used it. Um but just in case. Probably the most useful yeah. part out of that whole thing. Right, right. I'm thinking yeah, I don't think he ate the Taco John's. He's a God kind no. of a, he's kind of, you know, a purist. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not. I understand, uh, you know, don't, you know, leave anything behind, leave no trace. Yeah. But in that situation, I'm throwing that as far away <laughs> right, from me as possible. Right, you got right. some hungry bears yeah, in the area. No uh, way. And I mean, you guys went in there with full packs, so that probably didn't help anything either where, you know, well, you got the most amount of food as out of the whole trip right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> know. They didn't bring any of it. And, uh, you know, if the bears just asked me, I had a whole a whole, right. whole pack of jerky I would have gave them. <laughs> yeah, good right. stuff. But, uh, but, no, the reason we know that the bears came back is so Justin hiked out that night and then uh, – the game warden was there, and uh, so he slept at the game wardens. You know, got this beautiful house up in the mountains, and then there's a oh, guest yeah. cabin there, and uh, they've got horses. So he got to stay with him, and then they loaded a couple horses up and went in to basically go back to the attack site to um, to pick up all the stuff and figure out you know what happened here. And so mm-hmm. when they came. You know, his, the, the, the game warden had a dog, and the dog's name was, well, we called it Meatball because it looks like a meatball. <laughs> it's just a, it's a, I think it was Australian something. And, I mean, they're just like, you can't believe this thing can just cruise through the mountains like yeah. with no – but he was thick. And, uh, but the dog got ahead of everyone, and when it got to, you know, where, where the attack site happened, uh, it scared the bears away, and they saw him running uh, – because oh, wow. they were going to shoot them, but uh, they were still never hanging out in the area. Oh yeah, they came back to the packs and basically, you know, had at the packs that night, right. and so yeah, so if, you know, we were left there. You know, it was a good thing they they 
or Justin had me move down the mountain. So yeah, yeah, no kidding. That's wild how relentless they are. Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. You'd be main course at right, that point. Right. They had a bunch yeah. of appetizers exactly. in those backpacks. My exactly. God. Yeah. So so a few questions yeah. just regarding the attack. Um, so, uh, far as you know, you said you tried to make yourself larger, obviously to scare them off. And there's no such thing as a small grizzly. But right. if, you, if you had the guess, like. How many pounds do you think? Uh, you know, is I've just one? it's off the top of my head. So uh, they're the same. So I mean, I'd say at least four hundred pounds. And yeah, I mean, I go through that scenario. I've gone through it a bunch in my head. Is like, what could I have done different? Number one, I could have got the spray, you know, top off, you know. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think well, maybe if I just stood my ground, I'd be fine. You know, there's no way you fight a grizzly bear, but maybe no. if I just don't flinch, it's gonna you know, back, it's going to false charge. I don't know what they call it. It's like a false charge or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well, if I do that and it gets me on my back, like I'm a turtle, you know, I can't roll over and, you know, then I'm really hosed. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I think I did what kept me alive. Right. Uh, but yeah, I just wonder, well, could you have done something different? But, uh, right. but uh, we go back every year um, just to kind of, I think for myself, it's a sacred spot. You know, the, this world kind of drags you in every direction, but what's important. And so I kind of go back there to kind of ground myself and remember, you know, all the stuff that we're told is important really isn't. It's, you know, for myself, it's faith, family, and friends, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but I don't, the bear spray's in my pack now. I, I basically, I got a big gun that I use and I have, Right got on. more faith gotcha. in the gun than the spray. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, uh, what caliber are you carrying now? So, I, I I just use a 45 or not a 45, a four. What is it? 40 millimeter. Okay. Um, yeah. I just figure I I got a lot of shots with that. Oh, and, for sure. Uh, yeah. I got 16 shots, so one of them's got to hit something oh, yeah. vital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a large caliber, that, that, and it's it's also enough to have control over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I've you get kind to the of huge cannons, hand cannons. Right. That, you know. You got to be precise. Where yeah. You're creating yeah. That thing. Uh, Sorry, you know, I've no. done some research and I think, you know, everyone's has their own take on it, but yeah, that's his. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, that was my next question is, okay, does it have a whole magazine or is it oh, yeah. know, the guys <laughs> that have six rounds? Like I'm not, I'm going to the whole magazine no, there no. with, you know, 16 it's rounds right. for a chance to right. hit. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. putting yeah. it down. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this, for me, this part is just crazy because, like, I've done a ton of backpacking yeah. out there, too. And like we were saying before we started, yeah. like, in Glacier, you know, my buddies and my wife and I, we ran into a grizzly, and we were lucky that, you know, it right. ran off. They yeah. said out there. They're, right now, I mean, this was 09 that happened. Yeah, no, they're definitely <clears throat> not as afraid of people as they used to be. Yeah, know? well, and they said, like, at least for, like, the national parks, a lot of them there have now gotten used to so many sprays that right. they see the red can supposedly yeah. they'll, they'll see that and they run off but you know and i grabbed mine right away yeah and it was you know it was 60 yards away but he ran off yeah but now this just is crazy because you know this whole time it's probably ignorant youth but you know it's just like it won't happen to me yeah you know and when that happens like that whole time we were there then we also saw signs of like you know uh mother and cubs in area you know pack your food you know carefully right. and whatever and the it's always a thought, I guess. Yeah. But like hearing that is just like, man, I was probably a lot closer than I thought. Like, well, it's just yeah. nuts. And I think people, you know, will put it in their pack or whatever. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, if you're going to use that as your primary, you should have it at your hip at the very least, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. you're not going to have time to kind of dig through your pack. Right. Um, I actually have like an attachment yeah, that I made on my yeah. uh, strap, my backpack strap. Right. Just so it's right there. And then. I guess I put a lot of faith in that too. Cause yeah. I'm like, cause for me, I try to do like ultra light packing. So I'm taking the least amount of stuff. Right, right. So like we've talked about it years ago when we went to Tetons, I'm like, I'm not lugging a gun along. Like, yeah. I think I did that when we went to the Appalachian trail and yeah. it was just so annoying bringing that much weight. Right. And yeah. No, they're now, not light. Now hearing that though, I'm like maybe second guessing. Like, <laughs> what, I'm one of two people that can. And well, I think the other thing is, if I had stuck with the group, you know, if it wasn't just yeah. me, I don't think they would have attacked all four of us. You know, yeah. um, but I don't know. Yeah, I wonder too. Even if if you had a pistol, if you would, it, it just sounds like it happened also. Oh quick, yeah, I mean, you uh, know. Uh, 
they just felt threatened immediately and yeah. decided I mean, they just, were going to. It was, you know, under 10 seconds. Yeah. That, yeah you know, wow. From the time you saw them to yeah. they were on you, 10 yeah. seconds. Wow. And, and I think about, like, what you said when you threw it and you missed. You know yeah. what I mean? It's almost like, you know, again, just they're, they're coming at you, right. right? So uh it wouldn't have been easy, right? You're well, in the moment trying to make a quick decision. Yeah. And even if you had gotten the cap off, um when I, uh, when I was going – uh, bear or elk hunting out in Idaho. Yeah. Uh, I had planned on having bear spray and I bought, they make practice ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I had bought a couple of those and I, I posted a photo of it on Instagram or something. Yeah. And I had a bunch of people go, does that thing shoot a 44 mag too? Cause <laughs> you know, what you're gonna need, basically yeah. everybody's saying like, you're crazy if you're going to go into grizzly country without, with just that. Yeah. Um, and I did, but so I guess I'm crazy, but <laughs> I did practice with those. Yeah. And I mean, they shoot out a lot of stuff really fast. Right. So it's, I mean, there's a little bit of recoil yeah. there. And so if you've never done it before, yeah, I mean, with them that close, that could have been the case too. Like right. you could have got it off it and it yeah. right over their head, yeah. you know, whatever. So, um, but just, yeah, I, as far as, um, you know, the, the proper weaponry, you know, it just, it seems like maybe in that case, I, I don't know if anything would have. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's tough to say. You yeah. know, when yeah. when I was in the hospital there, um, just a little bit further over by Jackson Hole, there was a guide and his whatever uh, the guy he's bringing with. Uh, they had shot an elk the night before, and then were coming in the next day morning, and uh, and. Uh, they basically got attacked by these grizzly bears and uh the guide he had a i don't know if it was a nine millimeter ten millimeters but he had a he had his gun and uh they had the bear spray they sprayed the bears didn't stop the guide i'm not sure why but he threw it to his client the the gun and the client couldn't figure out or couldn't maybe just didn't have time to to, you know maybe it was jammed or whatever but never got the shot off and mm. ended up you know killing the guide and I, I don't know if the client I mean I'm sure he got mauled too but it was like just within you know a week of mine you know wow. you hear this other story and you're like in a uh, similar area too yeah it's just maybe under 100 miles from, wow. from where I was at yeah, yeah. Did they? Did any um, like uh, game wardens go looking for them since now they're you know obviously ferocious towards humans yeah, um, so later in the season, you know, they do the elk hunting there, and uh, there was there was a bear that was killed. They're not sure if it was the same ones or not. Uh, you know, one of the elk hunters, you know, had a, had a bear charge him, and he shot it. Um, but I don't know if it's the same one. It's, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I say a lot of this stuff is pretty relevant to us out here just because well, yeah, you, you guys know, are living in it. Yeah. Know? We got a lot of, you know, elk hunters around here and that's eventually a dream of mine. And I always think like, you know, okay, if you do shoot one, you got to hang the quarters. And then right. next step for me is making sure there's no blood in that tent. Cause you know, yeah. if you have food or whatever, they'll come in there and check it out. And that site where the mother and cubs were, uh, we found out after we left glacier a week later, there was a woman there with her, kids i think and she decided it'd be a good idea to bring the food inside the oh, tent yeah. and yeah she lost her life because they went right in there and tore her up it's like yeah i mean grizzlies are not a thing to play around with but no. i know like most guys well i guess you're crazy but uh, like you <laughs> I, said but yeah. my, my buddy that just came in here he's saying that he carries a gun every time out there and yeah i guess if i'm hunting maybe probably would do that because i have a huge elk with me right you know potentially yeah but for backpacking i was just focused on going light yeah but uh, uh second guessing that a little bit the, yeah <laughs> they make one uh it's called the pd 357 mm -hmm. um it's made out of uh, titanium it's super, super light. light but um i know the pd doesn't stand for this but for me because i have one i call it the palm destroyer oh, God. <laughs> yeah. there's like it's no all recoil huh? yeah Smack. there's no weight to absorb the recoil at all and so yeah your palms just messed after a few shots mm. yeah but could but, save your life yeah i was gonna say a bruised palm versus you know <laughs> you know playing with god right you know, right that's, that's a different story yeah well the other thing the game warden said is you know when you're the bears have gotten to figure out well when they hear the gunshot 
they know there's an elk down, you know, um, oh. and so it'll actually draw them to wow. these areas. And I don't know how true that is. It's getting what the game warden said, but I think they're not as afraid as what they maybe used to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I think if I was Justin that had to, your buddy that had yeah. to stay out there, I would have probably hung out in a tree as high up, <laughs> as high up in the tree. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be in trouble with black bears, but <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be super scary. I mean, just to. I'd be just looking over my shoulder constantly the whole time. I don't know. If, I don't think I'd, yeah. Oof. Did uh, the other two friends that yeah. were with you, they, where did they stay again? They, uh, yeah, they got so, out of there. So they night. got out, but they got out at dusk. So there, there's no way they would have got out in time to get an airport or the helicopter. So, mm. um, and then they got a ride into town. Um, so. Nice. Do you still talk to the that Katie and Dusty to this day or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they come with us, you know, when we go back out there most times. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Do they bring the dogs too? <laughs> they bring, yeah. Well, you, I think one of them. smart idea. always bring one at least. Yeah, yeah I think that yeah, of everything a dog is probably your best bear defense, you know. That's awesome. Because it'll at least buy you time. And right. right. Most dogs aren't going to run away. Yeah, exactly. I've heard, you know, stories like this before too where, you know, uh, the people involved you never really lose touch with because they were the ones oh, that yeah. saved you. Right, like, that's right. so cool. Like, bad way to meet, I yeah. guess, but no, <laughs> no, it's cool that you keep that connection there. We all meet people for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So when you go up to this lake, do you – so I'm assuming you're going up there and you're camping for a few days? Yes, or? yeah, yeah. So we'll just camp and then, you know, fish. Um, that's that's all I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you uh, – the elk hunt is on my wish list or bucket yeah. list, but mm-hmm. I've not yet done it. So mm-hmm. like yeah. the deer hunt, that's about all the time I take for. Sure. Yep. Right on. Yeah, that's probably the most beautiful place to fish at, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's it's pretty pretty nice. Are you, are you going after trout? Yeah, just yeah. trout. Right yeah. on. Do you ever – Do you are you allowed to keep them, I guess, when you're there? Or do yeah. you just throw them back? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll cook them up. And, okay, yeah. and you throw yeah. the gut piles very far away? Yeah, throw them in the water. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be my next concern right. after that. I mean, boundary water is like you said. Yeah, you've been there. It's the same thing. You were hunting there last year, and you were trying to do it on purpose, keep the carcasses by you. But if I, yeah, if I would have been smart enough to keep the first day of catch, oh, that I was catching. Right. But yeah. I was like, so long story short, yeah. I was up in the boundary waters. I didn't want to bring a bunch of bait, so I was just going to catch fish, oh, eat and the that fish, was be your bait. and use yeah. the guts for my bait. And the first day I was out, I was just slaying smallmouth yeah. bass. I'm like, oh, if it's going to be like this, I don't need to keep any of these. Oh, yeah. And so I just, so, but then for the next like four or five days, the You're weather skunked. got bad and I couldn't get out on the water. Oh, sure. So I was using duck carcasses. But so even if I had got the fish, I don't think it would have mattered because yeah. there was a pine martin coming in and stealing, oh, it, yeah. stealing it all. So, um, but yeah. Uh, definitely something I guess you'd want to be careful about. So when, so I question I wanted to ask is, did you ever put together like any sort of like marketing plan with jet boil to see if they could, you know, <laughs> you know I, I didn't, I should, I, you know, I, I, I should have reached out to them and then my backpack was a uh, granite gear. So oh. I should have reached out to them for a replacement strap at least. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. So they had to Do cut st- me out of it. I was just going to ask. Yeah. Uh, Do you still have the jet boil with the tooth mark in it? No. So that was kind of the unfortunate thing. Uh, so th- when they brought all the stuff back, they, you know, the bears had ripped up, ripped it apart. And oh. I think uh, they just kind of wanted to go through what was, you know, good. And yeah. they threw the rest of the stuff away, not really thinking just, I think the memory was so fresh in their head that they just didn't want to remember any of it. Right. And they didn't know yeah. like how things were going to turn out either. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So. It's true. Hmm. That would have been a badass thing to keep that jet. Yeah, oil, like, it would have been nice. Fire, fire right. mantle. And right. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me the story there. Uh huh. I guess the scars are enough. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Man. Yeah. So you're as your family now like on high alert, or do they have anxiety every time you go back with your buds. I'm sure they do, but yeah. probably not too much, I right. guess. Because what what are the odds, right? Well, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, now you're packing too, so that's yeah. got to give you some confidence. Mm-hmm. I know it would me for sure. So yeah. extra confidence too. You do have a sat phone now as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. My, I think my dad when I think was when I went to Tetons, he's like, he got this personal personal locator beacon. So it's basically the same right. thing. Right. And he's like, you got to take that, and you know, again. It, it's a thought because yes. every time you leave those trail ads, it's like 
goodbye signal. Right. You know, right. whatever happens in six, Big seven thing. days, uh -huh. it yeah. happens, you know. Yeah. And I got to ask, too, for Justin, did he have this wicked medic pack, or did he pack pretty light, too? No, or? so that was kind of one of the uh, the God things I think about it is about a week before that, you know, they'll have these in-services or these things where, you know, the paramedic medic will come in and give a clinic on this, that, or the other. So they uh, – they basically, you know, gave this clinic on, you know, penetrating wounds like gunshots and that sort oh. of thing. And mm -hmm. so uh, Justin, like, grabbed some some uh, Curlex, which is basically yep. gauze. So he brought that along with. I don't think he brought a whole lot else with, but uh, that was You're lucky. definitely hmm. instrumental. Yeah. So I get chewed apart for that all the time. Every time I head out, I, I grab, like, two Band-Aids probably four gauze pads because right. I'm like that will help more than a band-aid yeah. but I keep it light like yeah. the first time I went out it was a huge pack I'm like you don't need this what are the odds right like, right you're so lucky you had that without you'd be yeah. pulling shirts out right for padding, right so. right that's crazy yeah I in my uh um survival or safety kit or first aid kit uh I started putting um sutures in there and needles and stuff like that because when uh, ears and I were up in, uh, snowbird. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we we're, uh, shooting a 3d course up on this, yeah. uh, snowbird in Utah and he had like slipped and his ankle went down a rock, like oh. a sharp rock and sliced him open. Yeah. Thanks. And it was pretty bad. And so like even just simple little things like that. So I was just like, yeah, it'd probably be a good idea to have a needle. Like, and how cool of a story would that be? I, yeah, I stitched myself up in the <laughs> <Yeah>. wilderness. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. just drives me nuts, like packing all that extra stuff. Like yeah. last year is like the first year I was finally like packing with bow on my back and hunting. And I'm like instantly after the first day I get back, I'm like, I'm not bringing this, not bringing this, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, bringing yeah. this. Like, you know, and the medical was the same. I mean, I, I don't even know if I brought a med kit at all. I guess I had a lot of faith that I could drive back to right. town, but <laughs> I was just like, ah, it's just cactus and you know, whatever Rick, else. But yeah. Rick, I'm glad you brought that up. So, so now uh, to you, uh, Dr. Johnson. So what do you bring now with you as far as the safety kit? Yeah, I don't. Can. I don't bring a lot. I mean, I bring some gauze, and uh, you know, bring some duct tape, and uh, you know, some um, like ace bandages, I guess, just in yeah. can. You know, some medical tape, just in yeah. case someone sprains an ankle or something like that. Mm. But I don't go too crazy. Yeah, um, that's smart on the duct tape. Um, yeah, I mean, you can duct tape a an ankle if you need to yeah. in regards to lacerations and such. Keep yeah. good pressure, yeah. right, with the yeah. gauze against yeah. your flesh. And then, um, believe it or not, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, duct tape, when you wad it up yeah. and you light it, it's a great fire starter. I had no idea. Really? Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, that duct That's tape has idea. been in my pack for six, seven years. <laughs> oh, I guess sure. I could have been using that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what the EPA says about the emissions coming off <laughs> yeah. of it, but at least, you know, that little bit of time that it burns, man, it sticks, and, it, yeah, the, your fire is going on. Just don't sure. cook your fresh cooked, uh, fresh meal. Yeah, let it burn off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, I don't know where I heard it. It was a survival expert of some sort, probably Dave Canterbury or something, but I have a lighter and then I've got duct tape that's wrapped around the light. Right, right. That's why you so, make the roll a little yeah. smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More compact. This is so perfect. I, I, I'm i just going to replay this part, this segment <laughs> right, right there. You on go. Yeah, yeah, just be like, see, you don't need all this stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. go lightweight. Yeah. Survive faith. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I'm forever adding duct tape now to my pack for sure. Like oh, yeah. I always have I it always in my truck, some. but I can't bring my truck with me into the woods. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, I always have duct tape with me too, but I keep it light. I don't want all the stuff. I rarely use it. Yeah. I don't know if same. I've ever used it, but. Yeah. Seven there. years old is what mine is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at least right. it's just sitting in my bag. Moleskin, that's a big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. For the blisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big one. I don't get blistered too bad, but I still have it there from when we went to uh, the Appalachian Trail. One of my roommates in college just used, like, the whole roll. I'm like, dude, oh, like, I'm unreal. I was going to say, if you've never had to use it, you're not working hard enough. Oh, <laughs> okay. Come on, man. Yeah. So yeah. you guys uh, got any trips planned, or you personally? Yeah, we're going to go back out in, at the end of August here. Oh, right so, on. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to see some pictures you know, yeah. when you're out there, yeah. If, you, yeah. if you'll share them with oh, us. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That'd uh, be really cool. We could post it, maybe. 
We're yeah, I mean, here. if you've got some any photos from yeah, the if, whole ordeal. Yeah, I mean, we put a bunch of stuff out on our. Uh, we made a website because I didn't want to forget it, you know. Okay. And then it it makes it real easy to share the story. Yeah. And and the website is alive dash twenty eighteen dot com. Okay. Perfect. Mm. Apparently, there was a concert in twenty eighteen, so they got it without the dash. But um, <laughs> life. But it is kind of weird because we would name our stories or our, our trips, you know, every year. And so this was Alive 2018. That was the name of our wow. trip, you know. So wow. it's kind of kind of ironic. Right on. Is there ever a time of year, I'm trying to remember back from just going out there, is there a time of year that they say the bears are more active? Well, I guess they're more active in the fall. So, that makes you know, sense. They're we, we went a week or two later than we normally, than we're going now. And, uh, you know, they're trying to fatten up for the winter. Yeah. So, um, and that's what they thought. They thought when they went back there, there was a whole bunch of, you know, this, the red squirrels would get the pine nuts and then bury them in these caches. And that's what they were, these grizzly bears were digigging them up. So, oh. The, the warrant thought that, uh, you know, they were just trying to protect these pine nuts, which, you know, wow. yeah, I, I had a lot better <laughs> stuff if they wanted yeah. it. Yeah. They yeah. just had to ask. Right. Oh and you crested just over a hill. And yeah. They were there. I mean, it wasn't much of a hill. It just, you know, just, God, that's yeah. Nuts. That's, yeah. That was the I think same you thing hear for them me. or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, they're right there. Yeah. And and we were lucky. We had the National Geographic, you know, he stands on his hind legs in the middle of a berry patch. Right. I'm like, no thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let you have it. Uh -huh. I'll go back across right. the bridge. You have a great day. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's sketchy though. I mean, um, do you guys ever do the hay bear thing? You know, when you're walking here. No, or? no. Yeah. You know, now we'll actually I, we have a, we kind of are spotty. The first time we went back, I we bought one of these little portable speakers and just played oh, music cool. the whole yeah. time. You know, we didn't see. We saw some squirrels, but other than that, we didn't see anything. But that was quite all right. Um, right. But uh, we'll do that, and but I think if you just stick together, you're yeah, you're pretty safe. Yeah, that's kind of what the what do they call those? Like the park rangers, right. and the Glacier were saying, just you know, stick together and just talk amongst yourselves, yeah. and you'll probably be fine. And yeah. I mean, we were grouped up, but there's people with like the bear bells that drive me nuts. And, yeah, you know, yeah. those are just annoying. But there's all sorts of things that'll help. I think I'm just. For hunters, like relating it back, like we're yeah, all about like trying be, to be quiet. Yeah, you're not you going to be bringing bear bells or bringing music. No, yeah. not yeah. at all. It's just like you, you just better hope, I guess, and yeah. maybe have a sidearm ready. Right, right. Probably the best idea. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> think the, so. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking here on your website. This is really cool. So thank you for that because that'll give us some some stuff that we can do. But I'm I I see that there was an article. Uh, the story was in People Magazine. Yeah, yeah, that which was pretty great. neat. Yeah, they did a good um, job of, of keeping the faith in it, you know. Yeah, it's just I, I can't believe that uh, Joanna Gaines got the cover over your story. Right, right. With, with her yeah. new life with five kids, <laughs> what the heck. Yeah, yeah, you definitely deserve the cover. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, just, wow, what an incredible story. And, and I love that you guys keep going back. That was a question that was circ circulating in my head yeah. the entire time. I wanted to be sure to ask it, and you, got, you were able to tell us that. So that's really cool, too, that you guys still get out and you do it. And, yeah, just amazing. Yeah. And thank you so much for, you know, uh, coming here and sharing oh, yeah. your story, you know, as avid out, outdoorsman, I mean, you know, that's the connection is mother nature. Right. And so, um, for, you know, it doesn't matter how much we prepare, you know, uh, mother nature always reminds us of, of how brutal she can be sometimes. Right. And so, you know, it's, uh, pretty incredible again for you sharing your story of survival. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I I counted a blessing to be able to go through it, you know. Absolutely. Um, right. There's worse things in life to go through, you know, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That's that's amazing hearing that. Wakes you up and, like you said, yeah. all these important things. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, no, they're not. You, you got know. your family being number, well, faith and family yeah. being number one and right. two. Like, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, much mm -hmm. more important than... I guess getting an arrow customizer done, but <laughs> well, <laughs> that's up there too. Yeah. <laughs> a little plug there. <laughs> well, folks, that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, Dr. Johnson, where can folks find you if they're 
moving up to the Midwest from Texas and they really need to get their sinuses checked out. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the name of our practice is Oakdale ear, nose and throat, but we're not in Oakdale, Minnesota. We're in Maple Grove, Plymouth and Robbinsdale. Okay. So, Excellent. Okay. And then you've also got the website, uh, alive dash 2018.com. Yeah. So make sure everybody goes and checks that out. You can get some more details on yeah. the story. There's some videos there. Yeah. Our church did a 30 minute video, which is the best one. It's got, you know, a little, snippet of you know right after the attack and okay um so right on Excellent. what uh church is that it's that, called plymouth covenant uh, in plymouth okay. minnesota is that okay. that's on their website too uh, i don't know if it is or isn't okay they should put it on there That'd be yeah sweet. i think uh <laughs> maybe uh maybe at the heading of the video maybe I, yeah there is the video there from plymouth covenant there so um should be able to see that yeah amazing well you can find us at the range podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Find me, Jake Ivy3, on Instagram, and Jake Iverson on Facebook. How about you, Rick? Yeah, you can find me at ricky.wayne80 on IG and Ricky W. Bruley on Facebook. Again, uh, please be sure to head over to our Vapor Trail YouTube channel. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe so you can be up to date on all things archery. And once again, big thanks, Brad. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you joining us. Absolutely. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And with that, we are going to pack up our bows and arrows and leave the range. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Vapor Trail is now offering an exclusive discount to the range podcast listeners. Enter promo code TRP15, that's TRP15, at checkout for 15% off VTX bowstrings and Vapor Trail and Stoke Rise branded t shirts, hats, and other gear. Nice shot. Oh, what in the hell went flying? <laughs> I think I think he cut the I think he cut the tube at the bottom.